So let's continue with this problem. So the last time we worked on this problem, we worked out where the centroid of the given ID section is. And we worked it out to get from X, it measures 60 millimeters, and in terms of Y, it measures 75 millimeters. So the centroid position of the given shape gives us an idea in terms of where the miniature axis will be for the given sectional profile. So we've done that bit using the principles of first moments. So the next part is to figure out what the geometric resistance is in terms of how the cross-sectional profile of the beam has been defined, aka the second of of area. So again, you can go back and watch my lesson, my lectures relating to second moment of area, particularly parallel axis theory. Welcome into the C4F family by subscribing and liking this video. So that said, Let's get into calculating the second moment area, applying the concept of the parallel axis theory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the individual moments of inertia for each section of the beam as segmented. We're going to start off with section one. So section one. Okay. So in terms of the shape, let's draw the shape really quickly. And that's section. Okay, so that's section one. So we need some information before we move forward. So the last time we worked on this particular problem, we worked out that the area a1 equal to 600 millimeters squared. So we calculated that bit. And again, relating this to the direction of the deforming below, that's also that bend moment because the structure to bend. I stated, and let's assume that this is characterizing the view that the dimension that is parallel to the deforming lobe, that would be RB. And the part that is in plane or parallel to the deforming lobe, that would be RB. So therefore, to calculate the second moment of area for section one, so let's call that I1, will be equal to IDG1, plus A1 times H1 squared. Okay, IgG, basically the second moment of A relating to the form provided. So for a rectangle, IgG is equal to B, B, Q, and 12. Okay, therefore, IgG1 is equal to B is 60 times B. So B is 10 millimeters. Power 3 all divided by 12. So let's get our trusty calculator. So we have 60 times 10 to the power. Divided by 12, and that will yield 5,000 millimeters of power possible. So let's work out the parallel axis bit. So the back component of our expression, so A1 H1 squared, that'll be equal to the area, which is 600 times h. So what is h? h is basically the distance from the neutral axis, the global neutral axis, 
to the neutral axis of the segment. Okay? So that is essentially what we're trying to work out. So to do this is simply the difference. So H1 is equal to Y1 minus Y. Okay? So Y, and there will be Y bar to characterize a global coordinate with respect to Y. And that is 75. And in terms of the distance from our reference plane, to where the neutral axis is, that will be 175 millimeters. Okay, so this will be equal to 175 minus 75 into bracket or square. And don't forget that that characterizes H1. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. But sometimes I'm being asked, why am I going so slow? And I just want to make it find that when you follow this recording, you fully understand the concepts that's being delivered. Okay, that's one very close note. Right, so this is equal to 600 times 100 squared, which is equal to 600 times 100 squared. And that's equal to 6 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to four. So therefore, the total value of I1 is equal to 5,000 plus 6 million millimeters to the power of 4 and this will give 6 times 10 to the power plus 6 millimeters to the 4 so the contribution of resistance by the upper flange Okay, this part, that's basically 6.01 times 10 to the power or 6 millimeters to the power of 4. Okay, so we've done that bit. Then let's look at section 2. So section 2, we're looking at the web, right? So in terms of the web, so let's just draw that again. Do that quickly if you can. Okay. We've got G2, G2 there. This is R, B, and this is R, D bar. So for I2, the second moment of error, respect to the contribution of the web W equal 2. I G G two plus A two H two squared. Right? It's a fairly straightforward stuff. So let's not forget that I G G two would be equal to E two E two Q for this watch. So let's put that two. Let's put that two. So B two is equal to ten millimeters. And going back to our diagram, distance there would be 160. Okay. So the total height of the section is 180. So if the thickness of the flange is 10, that would be 20. If you back 20 from 180, that would be 160. Right. This is 160. This would be equal to 10 times 160 Q. And it's what? So because the magnitude of D is a significantly large, then the IgG component contribution towards the resilience would be quite large. Okay. So this would be equal to 10 times 160 to the power of 3 divided by 12, that was 3, 4, 1. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3
times what is the value of h2. So the value of h2 would be equal to this distance there. This is our h2. So that will be the difference between y bar and the distance halfway to the intersection of the bed. So that's essentially half of 180, which would be 90. Okay, and don't forget that we're taking our distances with respect to the reference frame provided for us to do our calculation. Okay, so this is simply 90 minus 75 the bracket square. And this is basically our H2. So this becomes 1600 times 25 squared. So 1600 times 25 squared. So 1600 times 25 squared. And that gives a million to the Alright? So therefore, I2 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 3, 3, 4, 0, plus a minute. And this gives 4.43 4 negative 3, and the center power of 6 minutes is 0. So we worked out I2. So we're now going to look at the bottom flange, which will be our section 3, okay? So to work out H3, that'll be equal to Y3 minus Y bar, okay? So Y3 is what? That'll be half the thickness of the flange, which would be what? 5 minus 75, okay? And this will give minus 70. The negative doesn't really matter because H is going to be squared, so that would convert minus 70 to give a value as a positive. Right. Okay, so let's look at section 3. Okay. I always encourage my students to always visualize a given problem. Okay, so this is G3. Okay. So again, put it with two with five levels. This would be our V to be three, and the section in plane or parallel to the formula that will be our V. Okay. So I three would be equal to I G G three plus A three H three squared. Okay, so fairly straightforward stuff. So let's work out I G G three. So I G G three that's equal to V three. B3Q divided by 12. So this would be equal to. So the length of that of the, of the bottom flange is larger than 20, and the thickness is equal to, or the depth, if you want to call it that, is equal to 10 millimeters. So we've got 120 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 12. So let's give a calculator. So this would be 120. Times 10. I don't forget this is Q. This is which is can easily make mistakes. Divided by 12, and that's equal to 10 thousand units. Very important. So don't forget the units. So we're now going to work out the pack component for the equation. So this we call this I hat. So A three. H3 squared, which is equal to 500, well, 1200 or 1200 times 
minus 7 and single 7, see those are in that thing. Squared. We bring our calculator to 70 squared times 100, uh, 1200. That'll be equal to 588000 So therefore, the contribution by the bottom branch, I3, would be equal to 10,000 plus 58,800,000. This 8, 9, 10 to the power of 6, and then to the four. So we've worked out the contribution of the upper flange of the web and for the bottom flange, or section 1, 2, and 3. So the total value of i will be the sum of the individual contributions in terms of the second number of the pair. So therefore, Total second element of area of the I section, let's call that I, it is either I or you can call it I2, that'll be equal to sub of the individual values of I. This is simply I1 plus I2 plus. I3. Therefore, I is equal to. This point zero one times seven to the power six. Plus. One point four three three times seven to the power six. Plus. Here. 5.89 of 10 to the power 6. All that to the power 4. So this point, which is a question of box numbers. So if you wanted to, we can factorize the common term, which is 10 to the power 6. So this can be rewritten as 6.01. Plus four point zero three three plus five point eight nine. Let's say that six is equal to six point zero one plus four point four three three plus five point eight nine. And that gives sixteen point three 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 times ten to the six. And then we use the four. So if we wanted to convert this into meters, then all that we have to do is multiply this by a thousand to the power minus four. Or divided by a thousand to the power of four. Okay, so if we do this, we do this um, Divided by a thousand to the power of four. Okay. So by doing that, you get one, two, three, four, so we can have 16.333 by the power minus five. Okay. And that gives us and there we have it. So again, for the reason these two um, work this out. So I'm going to modify it. Didn't know the results. Right? Okay. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.